Well, good morning, church. Happy Sunday, everybody. It's good to see you. Hey, listen, if you're in the lobby, why don't you make your way in? We've come here to worship Jesus this morning. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of worship. And his joy is our strength this morning. Come on, church. Let's put those hands together. There we go. Yeah. We sing. This is the day you made. So I'll rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad in it.
God, we thank you that your joy is our strength this morning. We can pull on it this morning. You're the God who goes before. We thank you that victory belongs to Jesus. We give it to you freely this morning. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. Yeah. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear, for I am safe with you. Come on, let's declare this together, church. So when I find out, right on my knees, with my hands lifted high, oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I will lay at your feet, and I'll sing through the night. God who goes before. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. Whoa. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. Beauty for us is Lord. When all I see is the cross, God, you about that this morning. He's the God who goes before us. Amen. Well, church, I really wanted to encourage you with this, uh, with this moment. You know, uh, I was thinking through, I was praying through this moment, you know, as, as it, it's custom for all of us on staff. We pray going into Sunday. It's like, God, would you speak something unique to the people that are coming here, for the ones that call Highlands home and for the ones who don't. And for whatever reason, 
This particular week, I had the people whose first time walking into any kind of church environment on my mind, right? And if that's you this morning, I want to be the first to say, welcome home. We're so glad you're here with us this morning. But I was thinking, I was trying to think through the lens, like how, how pastor always tells me, he's like, you know, try to, try to be sensitive enough to kind of feel what they're feeling. We're not led by our feelings, but we also want to lead in sympathy and empathy, right? So I was praying through it, and I'm like, okay, I just... For the first time person, I'm sure, I gotta feel like you're walking in on a conversation that's been going on long before you, and you're kinda like playing like hopscotch and double dust with like, okay, where do I jump in at? Like, I don't understand that, that sounds weird. You know, there's all those different kinds of things, and we try, we try very hard to create spaces where we, we normalize being in God's presence, okay? This, I know there's a lot of stuff you'll see on YouTube and all that stuff, but it's really just connecting with God and allowing Him to speak something unique to you, right? And, so I was thinking about it, and you know, some of you guys have fallen into this myth or this really this wrong way of thinking that you need to have it all together before you walk in here. Like, how, before I participate in anything that I see, I need to have it all together. Can I tell you something? That ain't true, right? And 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 I was reading through Psalm 150, right? And there's there's a whole list. It's like uh, what we're praising Him, where we can praise Him, what we praise Him for, His attributes, what we praise Him with, what different instruments. And there's this one qualifier in verse six. This is the only prerequisite you and I have, whether it's your first time or your millionth time, to participate in this space. It says, "Let everything that draws breath praise the Lord." Last time I checked, we got a whole lot of people in here that are drawing breath. That you have everything that you need in order to praise him. So if you have breath in your body this morning, can we celebrate Jesus in here? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church, let's praise him together. Jesus, you're worthy of our praise. We, your creator, respond to our creator this morning. You're worthy of it all, God. Blessed are those who run to him, who place the hope and confidence in Jesus. He won't forsake them. Blessed are those who seek his face, who bend the knee and fix their gaze on Jesus. They won't be shaken. Come on and pray.
Lord, not because of who we are or what we try to do, Lord, but because of who you are. Lord, we thank you. We love you. which means that there is nothing we can ever come up against that we're in need of that you can't supply. You are the God that's more than enough. So like the Apostle Paul says, we're going to boldly put our confidence and trust in you, knowing that you'll never put us to shame. You have our confidence this morning. You have our trust. And we pray, Lord, as we continue in this, and as we continue being in your presence today, and as we draw closer to you through your word, that you would speak something unique to us. We do not want to leave here the same way we came in. Would you do that thing that only you can do, and that's change our hearts? In Jesus' name, we give.
give it to you. And everybody said, amen. Church, how you guys feeling this morning? Anybody grateful for Jesus this morning? Can we celebrate him? Thank you, Lord. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Well, church, thank y'all so much for worshiping with us, man. It's going to be a fantastic day. We're so grateful that you're here worshiping with us. Before we do another thing, why don't you turn to your neighbor, give him a high five, tell him happy Sunday, and check out what we got going on this week at Highlands. Hey Highlands, it's Melanie. I hope you're having a great Sunday. If it's your first time here, welcome. We're so glad you chose to worship with us today. When you came in this morning, you were handed a worship guide with a connect card inside. Our worship guide tells you about us and our connection card tells us about you. You can use the connect card to share prayer requests or ask for more information about Highlands. Didn't get a chance to grab a worship guide? No worries. The QR codes on the seat back in front of you will take you to a virtual version of our Connect card. Feel free to scan the QR code and complete the card during our time together this morning. Everything we do at Highlands is made possible through your consistent generosity. If you would like to worship with your giving today, you can do so by texting GIVE to the number below, visiting our website, or placing your physical tithes and offerings in the secure boxes located by the auditorium doors. Thank you for continuing to support our vision of helping people know God God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. If you've been enjoying our Sunday services and want to know what's next, we've got you covered. At Next Steps, you can find out more about what's happening at Highlands and ways that you can get involved. Next Steps gathers every Sunday at 11 a.m. in our Dream Team Central room. It's easy to find. Dream Team Central is directly across from the auditorium doors. Step one is happening today, so join us in Dream Team Central. Step two is happening next week on April 21st, so mark your calendars now. Students, Summit is back and we plan to have fun. Tonight at 6 p.m., our 6th through 12th graders are having a game night. You can expect board games, bouncy houses, and a worship experience designed with teenagers in mind. Students, it's not too late to invite your friends. Text them now and invite them to Summit. Parents, drop off for Summit begins at 5.30. If you've recently committed or recommitted your life to Christ, water baptism is your next step. Baptism Sunday is happening next week during the 11 a.m. service. Signing up for water baptism is easy. Just visit our website at highlandschurch.tv slash waterbaptisms to sign up today. We can't wait to celebrate with you as you take your next step. Men of Highlands, save the date now. This Saturday, Highlands men are going on a men's excursion. HC Men's Excursions are one-day off-site gatherings for men 18 years and older. There'll be fire pits, amazing food, and a chance to connect with other guys going in the same spiritual direction. Registration is open now, so just scan one of the QR codes located on the tables in the lobby to sign up today. Ladies, we have something coming up for you too. On May 4th, we are having Shimmer, a Highlands woman event. At Shimmer, we'll be meeting at Pop-In at the City Center for great food, fellowship, and a lot of fun. Shimmer registration is now open. Visit our website at highlandschurch.tv slash shimmer to sign up today. Highlands woman, we can't wait to shimmer with you. We are so excited about all that is happening here at Highlands. Now it's time for the message. Let's prepare our hearts to hear from God's word today, and we'll see you after service. Good morning. How's the greatest church on the planet doing today? You look good. You sound good. The first service was a little bit rowdy. So you guys, the bar has already been set. If you're new around here, I want to introduce myself. My name is Hal, and my wife and I have the, 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 the privilege of, of pastoring here at Highlands. We, we planted it 17 and a half years ago, and, and I'm just amazed at what God continues to do o- over the years. I, I cannot, Can I brag on our church? We've had such a... a um, people just jumping in and getting involved and going into next steps. We got herds of people going the next steps and plugging in, and very thankful for that. But we've got a good group of guys that are going on our excursion next weekend. Come on, guys, where you at? And uh, we're gonna have a great time. We we have we have a lot of meat. I mean, just an unhealthy amount of meat, of meat that we're gonna have partake of. For all my vegetarians, we we um, BYOB bring your own broccoli. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, we're glad you're with us, but we'll pray for you. You know what I'm saying? But we, we've got 70 guys that are going to get away and carve out time to go the same direction. Come on, spiritually the same direction as other guys that are plugged in, want to grow in their faith. But, but we still have that opportunity open. It's just not like a one last push. It's we have some room available on the QR codes out in the, the lobby. If you want to scan that and get involved, you can do that. You can do that today. But the window is closing um, as of early this week. All right. All right. You guys ready for, ready for the word today? Yeah, me, me too. You are in store for a great, great treat. Um, those that are joining us online, thanks for joining us and, and logging in and taking time out to grow in, in your faith. Today, I've got um, just the privilege of, of having just my best friend on the planet come to town and, and preach for us. Not just give me like a day off, but really, I spent the day with him yesterday. And I tell you, have you ever been around someone that just being around them and what they talk about and, and how excited they are for the things of God, it just stirs your own faith? That's what happened to me yesterday by being with Pastor Craig Wendell. Pastor Craig and I, we planted... Um, our churches within like three months of each other 17 years ago and i've been amazed at what god's done in the the life of his church he and, and patty have amazing family all their kids love jesus they enjoy their mom and dad and they love god's church and uh, and i just i mean just life goals right still married still loving jesus and uh, and our kids love love the lord as well but with uh, this this first service we had it was just special and I know this, that every time we get together, God wants to do something special. Not carbon copy. We're not going to try to do what we did in the first service. But God wants to speak to every single person in here. It may be a little bit different, but God's got something for you, right? Amen. Amen. Well, I want to say that for the last 17 and a half years, we've called each other like schoolgirls multiple times a week. Every single week. Now, give it not being legalistic. I mean, we're out of the country doing missions, trips, and stuff, but literally for 17 and a half years. And I am so blessed by seeing what that looks like in my own life. In a day and age where relationships are disposable, godly ones, listen to me, church, godly ones are not. Well, people come and they go, no, 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 no. Godly relationships are not disposable, they're worth the work, and they are a treasure. And so, Pastor Craig, I've said this to you before. You're a treasure. I want to say it publicly. You're a treasure. You and Patty are a treasure to us. Whenever we're around you, that the, the, the vision that God gave us over a decade and a half ago, it burns within us just watching you run how hard after God in South Haven, Mississippi, just outside of Memphis, just right down the street from Elvis's house. Come on, somebody. All right. So in, in, in true Highland Church form, uh, I, I want, we don't have a lot of guest speakers. So this is, a, this is a chance for us to show honor where honor is due. Can we all stand up on our feet and put our hands together for Pastor Craig Wendell, our dear friends, a friend of Highland Church. My man. Thanks, buddy. Put yourself out. I love you, man. I love you, man. All right, all right. Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Hal said so many nice things about me. I'm gonna have to pay you extra, that's so good. He is my absolute best friend in the world. Um, I was just, I leaned over to him during worship and I said, do you remember when you came and preached at my church and we were in a movie theater and it was dark and dingy and there was like four people there? And, and he's like, yeah. You remember when you came and preached when we were at the school? You know, I mean, and I just love, I look around and I love what God is doing at Highlands. I love, I, I love what he has done. I love what he is doing. And I am so stinking excited about what he's getting ready to do. I mean, it's just like, oh my goodness. You look at the, I got to see the plans of the church and all this construction. And oh my goodness, you people are awesome. I hope you realize how blessed you are and what a blessing you are to your community. That's why you're here. And I just, I just love it. I love you guys immensely. Uh, we were talking the other night. I really am going to say something in a minute. But this is important. Um, we were talking last night. You know, we're kind of the, 
the older group of people that have planted churches that are pastoring husband and wife, co-pastoring. And there's a lot more coming up nowadays behind us. Um, but I just am honored that I got to blaze that trail with these two, Patty and I. My wife, Patty, she's actually preaching at our church in Mississippi. Um, so give her a shout out when you're praying like, whoa, whoa, girl, you know. Um, but I just love blazing the trail with these guys and we have called each other all the time because if you know anything about pastors, we quit every Monday morning just in case you wanted to know that. You're like, really? Yep, we're human too. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I just love doing life here. Thanks for letting me come. And if it is your first time here today, let me say this. I'm really gonna probably mess things up so he will fix it next week. So whatever I say, just nod and smile and then we'll move on and the next week he'll fix it and put it all back together and make it make sense. And then that's just how we keep doing things. All right, so I hear that you guys are in a series called Now What? And I love this series. I love that I get to speak in this series because Easter time, Easter's, Easter time is a beautiful season in the Christian church um, where people come to the Lord or maybe you've walked with the Lord for a while and you, you kind of recommit in this season. And that's, that's like awesome and I love it. And no, there's not a zinger on the end of that. That is like a beautiful time in the church calendar. And so this series is talking about where Okay, I made a decision whether it be the first time during the Easter season or maybe you've been saved for 634, 2,000 million, 100 years. That was like Biden numbers. Sorry, 6,300 years. Um, sorry, I gotta be better than that. I'm never coming back. Okay, I said I would behave myself and I just... Right there. I, no, no, stop. That was horrible. Okay, so maybe you've been saved 600 million thousand times, and now you're, you're still, like, it's just a season where we recommit, you know, where we get, get back at it. And the struggle with this is, being completely real, um, Easter time is beautiful, and it's, it's kind of like a high in all of our spiritual lives, but then real life happens, like genuine, go to work, deal with kids, deal with your spouse, deal with bills, deal with taxes. And our grip on that spiritual walk, sometimes it can, you know, you're like hanging on it, just kind of, and you're like, oh no. And there's a struggle. And so I love this series because it's talking about now what? Now, how do you hold on to this thing where it doesn't slip out of your grasp? How do you hold on to it and genuinely walk a Christian life that is mind-blowing to everybody around you and it becomes normal with the presence of God? Because yeah. I don't want to just say normal, but you, you track it with me? You, you track it? Are you all okay this morning? I just like to check in, a little temperature check. Y'all good? This crowd, see, this section seems to be a little better. Are y'all awake over here? Y'all good? I'll just call you out. I ain't scared to call people out, man. I just, I leave on a plane this afternoon. I'll just leave. You know what I'm saying? All right, y'all good? And so this, this before and after, this now what, I, I, we see this in Jesus's life, and I love this. And in the, in the middle, Luke wrote a biography about Jesus. We call it the Gospel of Luke. If you're not familiar with the Bible, it's, it's a biography written by a doctor named Luke. Ironic. Anyway, and so in the middle of this, this biography, and don't get all persnickety on like, it's not the exact metal, Pastor Craig. I know, I know. But just roughly in the middle of this, we see Jesus say something very profound. And if you've read the Bible, you might have read over it a hundred million times. But it's actually, I challenge you to go home and read the book of Luke, because the Bible is the best book in the universe. Read the Gospel of Luke and look at how when Jesus says this statement, and yeah, I'm gonna read it. When he says this statement, his whole pace of life changes. Um, it's just, it's like a journey before and afterwards it's a trip. Okay, so he says this, Luke 9, 51. As the time drew near for him to ascend to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Another translation says he set his face towards Jerusalem. And what from that point on, his pace changed because now he's got a time frame. The Passover's coming, and there's a lot to it, but there's, there's a pace change. And it's kind of like the difference from being on a journey to being on a trip. And the difference, a journey, you got time to wander, right? Like you just, you journey, whatever, but you ever been on a trip? How many of you are old school, road warrior, vacationing, load up the kids in the car and drive until your bladder is overflowing? Anybody? 
Now, and I'm not talking about this new school stuff. I'm all about the new school stuff. I mean, if I had my kids when the iPads were out, I'd be doing it too. I'm just saying, when you didn't have the entertainment for the back seat, and the speed limit was 55 miles an hour on any road school. We loaded up. We lived in Michigan, and my grandparents lived in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So every summer, almost every summer, we would take this journey all the way down. Why you would leave Michigan with no humidity down to Hattiesburg, the sweatiest, moistest place ever in the history of the world. But we did it. And we would load up, my dad, we had a Kingswood Estate station wagon. And if you don't know what that is, let me just preach for a second. That was the same car that was on the Brady Bunch. And if you don't remember that show, God bless you, youngster. The, it was the green with the wood panel luggage rack on top. Whoa, what? Backwards facing seat. Come on, somebody. And we would load that thing up with luggage. And so it was loaded down with luggage. And I had two sisters. And we would have to sit on that middle bench seat and that's where if you have kids or you if you used to be a kid if you could remember that far back without medication um that's where that's where you had immediately the imaginary line you remember that I mean, it was like it was like you sit in the car the doors go and there's no seat belts there was none of this it was just, and then And you just got the look, and that's where I invented the game like a lot of you did, because I was the youngest, so I sat in the middle, and that's where it was like, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I'm not, come on, you play, play that game. And, but you get, to, going to Hattiesburg, it was a long drive, and there was no, Dad, I gotta go to the bathroom, Dad, can we, no, no, what, what are we doing? Come on, any dads in the house? It was like, I am going here, and we are gonna get there by this time, and we ain't stopping, bro, there's jars in the back, help yourself, but we going. I'm the only one with a dad like that. Okay, so that's where Jesus is. And so you got to understand, now he's focused. But I love this because it, it answers the question of now what? Like, how do we live a life where now it's not just a journey? And I know we talk about journeys, but don't, don't misunderstand my illustration. We talk about that, but now we have a destination. Now we've got a time frame. And so we're moving. And so the very first people Jesus comes across on the way to Jerusalem, I mean, like it just happened. And I think the disciples are even saying, oh, you're now headed to Jerusalem. Okay, now what? Now what? And so he comes across these first people. And so I'm gonna read this passage of scripture and it's a little long. And so here's what I need you to do. I need you to do me a favor. Number one, I need you to stay awake while I'm reading it. Some of you are already asleep. Okay, wake the person up next to you and say, you gotta stay awake for this part. We're reading the scripture. All right, so we gotta stay awake for the scripture. And then you also have to remember what we said because I'm just gonna read it and then we're gonna talk about it later in the message and it, I'm not gonna read it again so if you forget it, you're gonna be out of luck. Come on, just give me a Presbyterian amen. Come on, just give me, this. okay, all right, all right, all right. Here we go. As they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go, but, okay, okay, here's the second part, here's the second part. While I'm going through this, we're gonna say the word but, and I need you to say it with me because you've always wanted to say the word but in church, and you get to it, it's okay because it's a but with one T, not a but with two T's. Okay? Can you help me out? And I really, I'm doing this because I want you to pay attention to all the buts in this passage. Again, one T, not, okay. As they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place even to lay his head. He said to another person, come, follow me. The man agreed, but he said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus, said, Jesus told him, let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. Another said, yeah, Lord, pick me, I'll follow you. But first, let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Okay, file that away. You got it filed away? And so all three of these guys, they want to follow Jesus. They want to move from the crowd, right, to the in crowd. And you know what it's like wanting to be in the, the in crowd, the cool kids, I'm with them. You know? And so they want to move there. And I really genuinely think and believe that their hearts were pure. Their hearts were, they really had a desire to just be closer to Jesus. Why would you not gravitate to that, that man? 
And so they're not being tricky. Like sometimes when you read the Bible, you read the New Testament, Sadducees, Pharisees, these guys tried to get close to Jesus and be in the in crowd only to trick him and, and you know, stumble him up or whatever. And these guys weren't doing that. They had a genuine desire. But Jesus rebuffs all three of them. Watch this, don't miss this. Not with ultimatums, but with accountability. It's not, it's not ultimatums. It's not do this or burn in hell. Are y'all, are y'all here this morning? It, it's not do this or burn. He, what he's saying is, oh, you're already a part of the Christian crowd. Now, now I'm going to rebuff you with accountability. And there's a difference. Um, how honest can I be? Can, see, they're all for it. You guys, yes, yes too? Or you just want to listen to my honesty with their approval. Is that, is that what we're doing here? Um, in my limited, humble opinion, I think we've handed out the word Christian a way too easy and a way too quickly. Okay, hold on. Some of you are already headed for the door. Hold on. Hang on, hang on. Christi Christianity is a... It's the number one leading religion in the, on the globe, on the planet. It, it's the fastest growing. It's the most quantity of people around the world. So it's all that. But it's also become a, a form of belief. It's also become a marketing scheme. It's also become a tagline. It's also become a title. It's also become a political stance. And so I'm not even saying any of that is wrong. Okay, I don't, don't think I'm saying, well, that's wrong. What I'm saying is we put so much into that, yet... It's not what Jesus called us to do. It's not who Jesus called us to be. Like your pastor last week preached a fantastic message. And he talked about how many times, how many were here last week? Raise your hand. So in this whole section, that's why you're not talking. Okay, okay. <laughs> Did anybody in this section go last, come last week? How this whole section is brand new, man. Now, I'm so glad you guys are here. Okay, all right, cool, cool, cool. Man, that's awesome. I love you guys. That's great. Man. Man, all right, I'm, all right. How many of you were here last week? Come on, help me out, help me out, be honest. You showered, you, all right, eight of us. Sweet, sweet. Um, <laughs> last week, Pastor Hal said, and, and I love this because he said, in the entire Bible from cover to cover, the word Christian is used three times. And the word disciple or follower, okay, those are, those are similar. The disciple or follower is used 269 times times and we put so much energy into this Christian thing and here I hope I'm not offending you too much um, we we have this gospel that now has been boiled down to I can raise my hand in the middle of the service say a simple magic prayer and I am changed forever but I have not changed one bit I know I'm not coming back next year. It's okay. <laughs> and we put all of our effort into that. And the bizarre twist of it is, that's not even what Jesus called us to do. He called us. Nowhere does he say, come, be my Christian. <laughs> Christianize you, me. It doesn't even fit. What does he say time and time again? Come on, follow me. Yeah. Come on, follow me. Because a follower looks completely different than a cultural Christian in the crowd. They are not the same. Look at this verse, Matthew 7, 24. He says this, therefore, everyone who puts these words of mine and puts them into practice. Oh, I, man, I'm used to being in Mississippi and they can't read, but you guys can, so come on. <laughs> therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into Practice is like a man who built a house on his rock. And I hear some of you, and Pastor Hal preaches the same stuff I do, and I understand that, and I know that. And some of you are saying, but wait. He said like four weeks ago or whatever, he told me that if I, I'm saved by grace, not by works, and I, I, this is not my works, and I'm not saved by what I can do or what I have done. It's not it's the grace of God. And I'm saved by that grace, not my works. And I don't even read the Bible, but I do know that somewhere one time somebody quoted in the King James Version of the Bible, it's not by works lest any man should boast. And I don't know what lest means, but I've heard it before. 
<laughs> and, and all that's true. Um, well, listen, don't ever confuse the word works with effort. You can't confuse the word work. You're not saved by works. Of course you're not. None of us are that good. But that doesn't mean that once I've accepted this beautiful gift of Jesus Christ into my life, now I am going to put forth an effort, one foot in front of the other, to follow him wherever he goes. I'm going to follow him. I'm going to follow him. Okay, 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 okay. So, you remember our three guys that we read about? Again, you guys are awesome. Um, okay, so we read a scripture earlier. It was kind of long. I said I wasn't going to do it again. Okay, it's about three guys. All right. Um, so let's look at these three guys and see what we can learn. So I suggest you take notes. Write this stuff down because you'll want to remember how badly I offended you later today. Um, so the first, the first guy, I like to call him the uncomfortable, I mean, the comfortable follower, the comfortable follower. The first guy said this, he said, I'll follow you anywhere. And then Jesus responds quickly by just putting out there the cost and understanding of discipleship, of following. He said, listen, you have to be comfortable with persecution. You have to be comfortable with poverty. I know, this is not popular in America at all. And I'm not saying you're supposed to be poor. I, I hope you understand this. You need to be comfortable with poverty. And why is that even a struggle? Because the minute something goes wrong, especially financially, we blame God. And we blame him, and then we judge how far we are from God based on how blessed we are. I'm not super blessed, therefore my relationship with God is not close enough. And we say, well, oh, oh here's, what, here's what I hear all the time as a pastor. I hear this all the time. I hear people say, Craig... I have a question. It's deep, are you ready? I'm like, bring it, Scooter, what's up? If God is all powerful and so good, why does he allow bad things to happen to good people? And that is an incredibly common question in the cultural Christian crowd because we're judging if I, we're judging ourselves and saying if I'm right with the Lord then everything should be paved in lollipops candy corns and unicorns and the minute it's not obviously I've sinned obviously I've done something so what if you're just persecuted and I mean like real person. I don't mean like you go to the Starbucks line, you're in the drive-thru and you order your almond milk latte and you all cool like that and you pull up like three feet and you take that sip. Mm, oh my God, it's, it's soy, it's soy. Oh, I don't do soy. I'm so, mm. And the lady leans out the window, is everything okay? And you're like, no, no. It's soy. It's so I ordered almond milk. It's soy. Soy, and she said, oh, I'm so sorry. And you're like, oh, oh no, I, mm, I know why you did it. I know why you did it. You did it because you saw my Christian bumper sticker and you're just persecuting me because you're of the devil. I'm persecuted for Jesus. <laughs> we, take, we take little first world problems and want to turn them into a judgment on our spiritual walk. What if... Hey, riddle me this, Batman. What if you just got the wrong drink? What if you just got demoted, not because God's mad at you, maybe you just haven't been doing a good job? Oh, I'm sorry, that was too in your face. My bad, my bad. But isn't it funny how we think that our life, the way we live, should have a certain outcome because we've been brainwashed to think that when Jesus said, listen, if you're gonna follow me, it's not always gonna be rainbows and unicorns. Right. Is this too real or are y'all okay? Are you? Here, here's, a, here's a true story. So when I was in college, 
<laughs> when I was in college, I was dating Patty. And that's my wife, by the way. It worked out, 32 years of marriage. Woo! All right, so I was dating her, and I was in college in Tennessee, and she lived in Alabama. And so in the class on Friday, I man, I was in that car, right? And I would drive those three hours to her house, her parents' house. And, and I would always rock out with, you know, like my, my, my jam was don't judge. Or you can judge, I don't care. Um, I would always rock out with like ACDC or Def Leppard or... Okay, two people. I love you so much. Um, everybody else is like, mm, what's with Sandy Patty? Where was Sandy Patty? Where was Carmen? Where was... And so, and the other thing with this story is I'm, I'm like a, I'm a lead foot. I drive fast all the time. Uh, like I have so many speeding tickets. Literally, I had my license revoked for speeding tickets. Yeah, that's me. Okay. So anyway, this is while I still had a license. Thank God. Okay. And so I'm driving. And I decided on this trip, I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to listen to Christian music. I mean, I'm a Bible study student. I'm at school to learn the Bible. I know it doesn't show, but listen. Okay, so I'm at school, Bible study, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen. I'm going to put in for him basics of life. Does anybody, anybody two people, it's, all right, it's old school. It's old school. It's, I'm ancient, and, but it's Christian, so I'm, I'm good, right? And so I'm like, I'm just going to have a moment with Jesus on this drive. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to love it so much. And so I put the cassette in, and I'm just driving. I'm just, oh, yes, Lord, it's a great and about an hour into it, I see, whoop, whoop. Anybody ever experienced that? And your whole life just falls apart, right? You're like, oh, God, no. And so, but I think I'm okay because, I mean, I'm listening to Christian music. I'm making a good choice. I chose, verily this day, I shall not listen to ACDC. I will rock out for him. So obviously the God of understanding what's going on will not give me a ticket. I understand this and I know this and I'm confident in this. So the officer walks over to the car and he says, license and registration. And I'm like, you got the music just loud enough so he understands my flow. <laughs> and you know, not, not audaciously loud, just enough, just enough. And he's, he just takes back to his car and he's back there for a long time, a little longer than one would expect for just a warning, right? Why not just, oh, you're a follower of Jesus Christ. God bless you, go on, young man. He comes back and he says, here's your ticket. And I said, but I'm, I'm listening to, and it's just that moment, right? Where you're like, you're not getting out of this stuff. I take my ticket and I literally cried all the way to my girlfriend's house, two hours. And this was my pity party. Isn't it interesting when you throw a pity party, nobody comes but you? And I'm having my pity party, I'm like, my God, I was listening to the, it, it was like a holy of holy moments, and I was choosing right, I chose right, and you're not blessing me. I know you might say that's silly, but how many times do we think just because we chose right, everything should line up green lights for us? And when it doesn't line up green lights, we're like, well, then I must have messed up what if you're just actually a follower of Jesus Christ and you realize that everything might not be rainbows and unicorns. It might be a few red lights. It might be a few bumps in the road. It might be a few bankruptcies. It might be a few lost jobs. It might be a few kids off the rails. It might be those things and some of those things are all based on choices, but some of those things are just because we live in a fallen world. Yes. Yes. Okay, you ready for the next one? Did you guys all survive that one? I got two more. Okay, okay, here we go. Here's the second guy. The second guy, I like to call him the convenient follower. He's convenient. And he says this, I'll follow you, but first let me go bury my father. Let me go bury my father. And you might think, well, not to bury your father. That's rude. You know? Okay, so in American culture, we would think that my dad is already dead and I need to go bury him. But that's not, that's not Jewish culture. So we, you need to understand something about this. Jewish culture was, it was always the oldest son's responsibility to bury their father. Always. And so we know a couple things. Number one, we know that he's the oldest son. Cool. And we also know that his dad is not dead because if his dad was dead, he wouldn't be standing there. He would be taking care of funeral arrangements. And so now what he's really saying, and Jesus already knows this, what he's really saying is, hey, I'll follow you, but right now I have something more pressing and more important than you. I'm going to go home and wait for my dad to die. And whenever he dies, and then I do the funeral arrangements, when it's convenient for my time, I will follow you. Anything we put in priority above following Jesus Christ is what we call an idol. Yes. 
Hi. Oh, I will. I'll keep going. Mm -hmm. It's an idol. We build these things up. And, we say, and here's what most people say. Yes, Craig, but it's a good thing. My marriage, my spouse is a good thing. This relationship is good. My family, it's a good thing. The good things make the best idols because they're good and they're culturally acceptable. I'm gonna explain this, so hold on. Some of you are already getting ready to walk out. Pack that purse, Margaret, we're out of here. Okay. <laughs> and if you're wondering, no, I didn't take my medication today. Okay, so... We, we have these things that they're so good and, and the culture accepts them and says, that's, yes, that's good. And so because it's good, we elevate it above God. And so how does that even work? Are you saying abandon my spouse? Absolutely not. You abandon my kids? Absolutely not. But let me, let me do it this way. If you have Pastor Hal over here and, his, and Pastor Sandra is not his first priority, and it's not, by the way, but his first priority is Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God, Come on, you track it with me? And let me help you out, husbands and wives. This will save you so many arguments, it'll blow your mind. Because when you put the kingdom of God above your own selfish desires, it changes everything. But let's go, okay. So if Hal is now chasing Jesus, and that's his first priority, as Pastor Sandra chases the same thing, what do they do? They grow closer and closer together. The more they follow the top priority, the closer they get. The more your kids follow the top priority, the closer they get. Are you saying they won't be obedient to me? No, the exact opposite, because they gotta go through you to get to God. Oh, that's, better. that's better preaching than you think it is. I'll just read a verse. <laughs> Matthew 22, verse 37 says, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Followers of Christ never say, as soon as I get this taken care of and then next week I got a few more things and then that's the ball season so I can't do anything there. But as soon as the season is over and as soon as that's over, then I'll, when it's convenient for me and my family, then I will follow you. No, those are all conversations that the common cultural Christian crowd has every single day. Just read another passage, just stay focused. Okay. Matthew 6, says this, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Okay, so I have like a minor in Greek, you know, so it's like I'm all fancy in Greek and so I did a deep dive in the Greek words of above all else and I parsed them out and I found this incredible deep definition of this above all else. You ready? Are you ready? Write this down, here's, here's what it means. It means above all else. <laughs> Isn't that mind blowing? Greek study is so profound. It just blows me away every day. Seek the kingdom of God, where? Where in priorities? Where do I seek the kingdom of God in priorities? Do I seek it above my job? Does your job fit above all else? And you can fill in the blank. Above anything, yeah, but see, we start seeking these things because we want the last part of the verse, and he will give you everything you need. Yeah, I need this stuff, and I want this stuff, and I desire this stuff, and God's never even saying that that's, this stuff is bad. What he's saying is if you constantly try and seek this stuff under your own power, skills, and gifting, you will fail every time and come up with depression, anxiety, and misery, but if you will just turn it around and trust him as your top priority and seek him and follow him, him at the kingdom of God, then you put that first. He gives you everything else that you ever wanted or desired because you've sought something different first because the answer is not in my gifts and talents. The answer is in my God every single time. Okay. You ready for the third one? Again, you guys are awesome. I love you so much. Come back next week. Pastor Hal is way better. Okay, um, here's the third one. The distracted follower. I call him the distracted follower. And he says, I will follow you. But, but first, let me say goodbye to my family. And again, this makes perfectly good sense. You don't go trampsing off through the woods in the wilderness with a rabbi without telling your family goodbye. So it makes sense. But have you ever been reading the Bible, which I know you do. Have you ever been reading the Bible where somebody asks a question and Jesus, they ask a question to Jesus, and then it's like he doesn't answer the question. It's like he goes completely off track and says something different. Has anybody ever 
Just me, just me. Okay, there's a lot of them in there. You should really read your Bible. So this is one of those ones where Jesus, the guy asks the question, you know, let me do this. And Jesus, he, it's like the guy says, hey, let me go say goodbye to my family. And Jesus is like, hey, man, any man who puts his hand to the plow and looks back ain't fit for, the, it's like, is he smoking crack? I don't know. <laughs> and then you're thinking, did he just ask if Jesus was smoking crack? I don't know. <laughs> he was not, by the way. <laughs> but he, he, every time you read that in scripture where Jesus seems to not be answering the question, oh, pull those out and pay attention because what he's doing every single time, he's not answering the question. He's not even speaking to the excuse. He's speaking to the motive underneath the excuse of the question. And this is one of those situations. Um, so I grew up, again, I grew up in Michigan and we had a little tiny house. We, we had very little money. We didn't, and uh, so, but we did have five acres and my dad, mom and dad had decided that they were gonna make a five acre garden like a garden. Now, now I understand now that I'm older, we had to put up vegetables and stuff. If you don't know what put up is, then well, you're not in the South. I don't know where you're from, but um, put up vegetables, canning. Some of you are still looking very confused. Do people still do this anymore? Before Kroger had a freezer section. <laughs> so, but we had five acre garden. And if you know anything about being alive, five acres is a lot to garden. And so I grew up seeing my dad, we had this little tractor and he'd be out there plowing and disking and all that stuff. And I, I was eight years old. I remember this. And he was like, I was standing there on the edge of the garden. Well, I want to drive the tractor, but my feet wouldn't touch the pedals or all that. And I'm like, I want to drive the tractor. I want to drive the tractor. Feet couldn't touch the pedals. But one day he came to me and I'm standing there and he says, Hey buddy, do you want to work the rototiller? And I'm like, Now, if you're younger and you don't know what a rototiller is, you're gonna to wanna to Google this. It's spelled H-A-R-D-W-O-R-K. And if you're from Mississippi, that spells hard work, okay? So, and so if you don't know what a rototiller is, it's like handles, a motor, and then ours was a front end disker, okay? So it's got all these little blades going. And you just walk behind it and it chops up the dirts into fine stuff so you can plant vegetables. Okay, and so he says, all right, buddy, here you go. I'll start it up. All you gotta do is walk behind this. Hold on, don't let go. And all you gotta do is make a straight line. Just go across, because you need a straight line because we're gonna plant the vegetables right here. So just make a straight line. I said, okay, okay. He said, and listen, part of the way through, you're gonna hit rocks here and there. It's okay, just keep on going. Just make a straight line, just hold on. And when you hit a rock, it's gonna buck, you know, but just hold on, you'll be great. And I was like, okay, Dad, okay, Dad, okay, Dad. And he starts that thing up and I start walking and you know, and I'm eight years old, and it's just like. <laughs> and then I would hit a rock and it's just, oh, all right, and it bucks and I'm like, <laughs> and I get to the, I finally get to the other side of the garden and I'm like, oh. And I turn around, and it was shocking because my dad was right behind me the whole time. He had my back no matter what was going on. I didn't even realize he had my back. And he, so he's right in front of me, and he says, buddy, good job. I'm so proud of you. You held on. That was awesome. You might have thought it was getting out of control, but you held on. Way to go. And I'm like, thanks, Dad. Yeah, I'm a man. <laughs> and he says, okay, let me show you something. And he stepped aside for my track, right? And you know as well as I did how straight I was. I mean, it was crooked as a dog leg. It was just like, and I'm, like I'm sorry, Dad. You gave me one direction to just go straight. I tried really hard. He's like, bro, hey, buddy, hey, it's okay. He said, do, do you know what happened? I said, well, I hit these rocks and they got me. I just said, crazy. You know, it's just, ah. And he's like, yeah. You're gonna hit rocks. He said, it's, it's, it's part of it. He said, but listen, your real problem was not the rocks. Your real problem was you hit one rock and then you start looking in front of the rototiller for more rocks and you start focusing on them. He said, the only way to plow a straight line is to pay attention to where you're headed. Can I tell you something? There's rocks right now every single day. You can focus on them or you can just live with them. There's rocks, you can right now, you have a choice today to focus on the rocks of politics, the economy, 
What's the housing market going to do? What's this going to do? You can focus if you want to on the ubiquitous drama that is all over social media. It's your choice. And I'm not saying you ignore those. All of those things are part of our life. Those are rocks in our garden. And it's, it's not that you don't have to deal with them. You're going to hit them. You're going to come across them. But you are making the choice whether you are going to focus on them and get distracted or are you going to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Look at this verse in Hebrews. It says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance. Man, I love this. Let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Listen, you will come across things even today, and you get the choice whether you are going to be a distracted follower or are you going to focus on Jesus Christ and follow him wherever he goes. It, you might not like the bumps in the road, but don't quit. Don't stop. Don't get so distracted by the political world that you lose your focus on following Jesus Christ. So this morning, as we close, and it's time because they're playing music, so that always lets you know in church <laughs> that it's the time to stop and for the presenter, pastor, preacher, to get serious and lower his voice and make hand gestures like this. Steepling is always good. Sometimes you. Why are you making a joke at this point in the time? Because number one, laughter's good. And number two, can I just tell you something? One magic prayer is not gonna fix your tomorrow. It's just not. I've been doing this thing for decades. And I see people all the time, they, they put so much faith in a prayer that they miss that their faith is supposed to be in the rabbi that they're following. And we want a prayer to magically take the rocks out of our garden when Jesus just wants you to walk. Just fix your eyes on him and follow him. I am gonna pray for us, but I want you to understand something, that the prayer is really just to encourage you to step. Don't quit. Don't get distracted. Don't become so focused on comfort that you forget the one that has called you to live a life of uncomfortableness. But he gives you the power to walk through it. So can I pray with you right where you are? And before you bow your heads, before I even do that, I wanna say this. Um, if you've never made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, this is a beautiful opportunity to do that. It's a personal decision. Next week is water baptism. That's your public declaration that I'm now following Jesus. Um, and so how does salvation even work? Here it is. Romans 10, 9 and 10 lays it out so clear. He says, if you will confess through your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that he died on the cross and came back to life three days later, you will be saved. So let's break that down. All you have to do is confess your sins to him and then confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is in you. You're telling everybody, I'm a follower of Christ. I'm following this man named Jesus Christ. And you believe in your heart that he came back to, died on the cross and came back to life three days later. From the confession of your mouth and the belief in your heart, you have now changed directions. So if that's you, if it's your first time doing this, fantastic, do that. How do I do it? I just told you, were you not listening? But here's where I wanna focus this prayer this morning. I, I really do, because I think there's a lot of People, and I'm just hoping, I'm, I'm really hoping, praying, I've been praying and believing that there's somebody here that's just, you, the cultural Christian crowd has not been working for you and you do a reboot every year and it's time for you to step out of the cultural Christian crowd and start becoming a follower of Jesus Christ. So that's who I wanna pray for this morning. And I, I hope that's you. I hope there's somebody here that just has the same passion in me that just wants to see... I want to see something different. I believe this, and I'm just going to follow the rabbi wherever he goes. Can, let me pray with you. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? Heavenly Father, I love you so much. Father, I thank you for your hand in our lives. I thank you for the power of the word of God. And Jesus, I thank you for showing us even the change of pace to a now what? 
Now we have purpose. Now we have vision. Now our eyes are fixed on you. Now we know how to deal with the rocks. Now we know, now we know, now what? So Father, I ask that every single person here that has this calling, this feeling, this emotion, they might not even understand it, but that's, Lord, let them understand that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Not condemnation, that's not you. But the conviction to just say, hey buddy, you're doing great. Come on, you can, do, you can do a little better. Come on, we're gonna pull forth some effort. So Father, I ask that you encourage us, that you strengthen us, that you let your power bubble up inside of us and make us just a fountain overflowing with joy that is unspeakable and completely full of your glory. We love you, Lord. Help us move closer to you. Now may God, the fountain of hope, Lord, we just pray that you fill us to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as we trust in you. And Lord, we pray that the Holy 